Good morning, everybody. It is September 2nd. I know I'm getting behind on the videos, but I'm trying to crank them out as fast as I can. It is plus five out. It's cold. Used to plus 35 here every day, so a little bit cold this morning. Just unloading trucks from the night before. Unload these trucks, fuel to fuel truck, and we'll head to the combines, fuel them up, and check them over. I had some roof sprinklers yesterday. Oil's here. Check oil. Oh, what? I think we're just a little bit on an angle. At least that's what I'm gonna go for. A couple of spots to hit with the grease gun while fueling up, especially on the headers, is the Macdon center canvas. This guy and that guy. There's three of them. They're 50 hours, but give them a couple shots every day. Plus the knife head on the end. One or two shots. And the reels. Let me just check for broken knives. Give it the once over. Okay, have a good day. I had a catastrophe with my coffee yesterday. It spilt all over the floor, but I cleaned it up. My dad has his glass cleaning and cab cleaning kit in here, so you can't even tell. It just smells like coffee. Grandpa, do you want me to start at the slough in the middle or on the uh, west side? <coughs> A little bit tough cutting yet this morning. I'm only going 3.2 miles an hour. Usually I cut around four. Uh, my moisture is 13, bushling right around 40. The wheat is super dry on average. My moisture is, yeah, 10.9. This wheat's super dry. The peas were really dry and I can assume the canola is gonna be as well. My average for yield, yeah, 36.7 which is not bad, it's way better than last year, but still um, a good wheat crop here is going right around 50. But I am done spraying, which is nice. I'm done dusking everything, finished spraying that canola with Roundup and Heat a few days ago, so everything is desiccated. Uh, as soon as we're done the wheat, we still have quite a few days of chopping wheat, but that canola will be ready as soon as we're done this. I have my yield map on, which is all these different colors. So green mean is, means it's heavy, and then orange and red means lighter. 20 bushels, green is 50 and above. So this green here is down there in that hollow. Pretty heavy chewing down there. Big slew here, and then a little bit lighter up ahead on top of that hill. So it's pretty accurate a good representation of the field and where you're at. Combining in the Redberry Hills. So in these hills, my combine settings are going to adjust on the fly. See my fan is changing that. It's the blue, the blue numbers are the numbers changing. So if I'm going up a hill, uh, my fan speed is gonna slow down and my sieves are gonna open up. When I'm going down a hill, my fan is going to increase and then my sieve and chaffer are gonna close down a little bit. That is my active terrain adjustment. So depending on the angle that the combine is at, it's gonna affect how clean the grain is. So it's just changing those settings on the fly. I have my Harvest Smart and my Auto Maintain off right now. I kind of just do that manually. We can click it on here, the Harvest Smart. Um, just wants you to drive a uh, certain speed. So that is B to engage that. And then it'll just hold its speed, at the speed it thinks it should be threshing at. 
auto maintain. It's going to kind of change its settings even more and I can set my performance target for how I want the grain to be cleaned and stuff. Another thing you can do if you're not happy with your sample, you can go optimize performance. Let's say you're having some light foreign material in your hopper, so a little bit of chaff that you don't want, say a moderate amount, it'll recommend a solution for you. So you can increase your fan speed, it's recommended solution number one, increase it 40, and there's all these solutions after that. Decrease threshing speed, increase your clearance, stuff like that. So just kind of a recommendation guide. There's all these, oops, oops. Just depending on what you're finding. Say you're cracking the wheat, cracking the wheat bad. Yeah, increase your clearance decrease your rotor speed so pretty cool if you don't know what to change you can just start with that but I think we're pretty good right now I have it's either a rock or a clump of dirt sitting right in front of my center canvas I got to get that out of there oh no, it's a well it's like a clump of dirt well Probably doesn't need to go through the combine anyway. Should be okay. Sometimes the rocks sit right here on the knife. I can't get over the lip, which is good, or sit right there so they don't go through the combine. The wheat is hard threshing out, it seems like. The, it's really burnt in the wheat head, so the bottom part of the wheat head is kind of like one or two kernels still left in there. We can't seem to thresh it out. Our clearance is really small. You know, we're running kind of tight settings and high fan speed and we just can't seem to thresh it out and we've found that other people are having the same issue. So, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad for, uh, not a bad sample. I think it's just the year, just the year with the hot and dry and burnt that, that kernel in there. how the sample looks when you're unloading. A little bit of chaff in there, there's nothing really I can do about it. I've tried switching every setting in the book. It's not too bad. The wind will blow it out. Okay. My shield popped open. That is weird. Maybe this wasn't latched. bigger hill like this that fan is gonna slow way down and the chaffer and sim are gonna open open up now they're starting to close down again as I get to the top of the hill if the combine is straight up the wheat is gonna have a it's gonna blow easy right out the back of the combine so if you slow that fan down and it won't fall out of the back of the combine as easy now it's starting to fan is starting to speed back up again and as I go down now it's gonna speed up probably that 1200 mark yeah the settings are always changing there's my buddy Jackson in the Massey dust flying behind him hope things are running good that way <laughs> I was just talking about him. He was wondering what's for supper. I told him Tong's walk. Now I lost... Oh, it's back. I lost my GPS signal. Never had that before. What the heck? It totally... 
it's rebooting now. That's weird. Oh my goodness. Kind of need it because we got our pattern going here. I just have to wait for it to uh, boot up again. Okay, Let's start the header again for the third time. Auto track on. Engage. Okay. had that happen before. So going up this hill, my fan is going to slow down and my sieve and chaffer are going to open up. There they go. This one's pretty steep. My advisor, active train, 10 degrees, 10 and a half. Adjusting on its own, getting to the top, and it'll change back. There they go. The hollows are heavy. 100. 90. Big hollow here. Map is all green. It's like covered in the chalk from the cloud line, so it's hard to see it. With my scroll wheel on the back, I can scroll and toggle through all these different screens. I don't know why I keep saying that all day long. It's either I'm leaving the group or Grandpa's leaving the group. Doing 16.1 acres per hour with this combine. And then almost 1,200 acres done. I don't think I reset that, so I think that's right. So, yeah, 2,400 total. Maybe I did reset that after the peas by accident. I'm not sure, yeah, I, th I thought we had about 2,500 done so far. I can go into my load pages shows all my loads here. Um, load number 47 has the moisture, the average yield, and the weight. This one's 20,000 pounds. Oh yeah, that one was big. 23,000. Big loads. It's thick going around these trees. 70s, 80s. John Deere's just munching away. 11.9 going down. Just keep going around to the north side of the bush. Close my sieve right down to zero. Hey, you should be able to see him now. We're on right in front of you. This field isn't exactly flat and straight going. A bunch of twists and turns. Pretty much have to drive, you can't even use your auto steer that much. When I desiccated this, I got like four passes I could use the auto steer on. The rest was just twisting and turning around all these trees. Supper time. Couldn't finish it all. Too much. 
I'm gonna save it for later. It's gonna be my midnight snack. Oh! Ain't too much. For lights, the dial is on the steering column. Lights come on, the screen comes on. So there's two presets, one and two. I just have, um, just the change between one and two is the side light for, I just have it on when I'm unloading, or else I just have it off. And then, this is the light page. So yeah, one and two, yellow means on, gray means off. And then your timer, when you shut off the combine, at the end of the night, so I have the lights will stay on for three minutes. You can change that to whatever you want. So three minutes is good. And then those, just a few lights will come on when I shut off the combine. So if I unlink one, oh, that's outside. Yeah, so I can just turn off the one side for whatever reason. I just link them together, and I have it on, what do I have on, two, those are the lights. Had to slow down a little bit, must be getting cooler out, down to, yeah, 2.9 miles an hour, 64 degrees outside, what's that, like, 16, 17 maybe, I think it was like 26 degrees today. Here's my late night tips and tricks. Well, it's only nine, it's only 10 after nine, but uh, one thing, well, as an operator, you're always watching for uh, oil leaks or something wrong with the combine. You're always listening to, uh, if you hear something out of the ordinary. So with this big screen here, you always gotta remember to check those tires because I've had a flat tire there before and this screen blocks it. Also, my lunch kit sits here. You gotta remember to peek down and see your PTO and your header connections because I've had a massive oil leak there before and I didn't see it because I was staring at my lunch kit. That is my late night tips and tricks. Everything is full. We don't have much left here. We got 11 passes left after these two. Did all this this morning, did all this in the evening. Started at 76 acres on my counter. So we did over 300 acres today. Tomorrow's goal is finish here. Gonna be about 100 acres left here. We've got across the road, uh, 135 acres over there, and then move home, six miles home. So if we do all that, maybe get started on the next field. Uh, just south of home, that'll be another good day. Thanks for watching.